Welcome back to this channel. In this section, we'll be discussing properties of fluid, specifically pressure in manometer. And this question will aid us or help us to understand how to calculate pressures or pressure questions pertaining to manometer. Follow along as I read the question. The pressure in a natural gas pipe is measured by the manometer shown below. So this is the manometer we are talking about and everything has been given to us. With one of the arms open, with one of the arms open to the atmosphere, where the local atmospheric pressure is 14.2 kilopascal, determine the absolute pressure in the pipeline. So how are we going to solve for these questions? But first, calculating for absolute pressure in a pipeline or absolute pressure, you know that absolute pressure is equal to the gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure. So we have to know this or note this down before we start. We start our question. We start answering our question. So in this figure, we can do something. We can see that there are about four components here. Where the components are the natural gas. We also have mercury. We also have air. The components air and also water. So how are we going to solve this question with this information being given? We also write the formula for pressure of a fluid, which we know it to be rho GH. So in solving this question, we are, we are supposed to write an equation which will aid us to get our findings, that's our absolute pressure. So as we know this down, we know that P1 which is our atmospheric, which is our absolute pressure. And also the pressure here, which is exposed to the atmosphere, giving us the atmospheric pressure. So now they want you to calculate the pressure at this side from the natural gas. And we all know from our studies that pressure increases with depth. So the more, you go down the more your pressure increases but the more you come up your pressure becomes negative so in this we have to write our equation where which will start from the p1 which is our our absolute pressure so writing the equation we have p1 and our first component the natural gas since it's part of the p1 we don't consider that we come straight to the mercury, which is our second component. And the mercury starts from here. It's being flowed from this side to this side. But we have been given the distance from here to just this side. So what about this side? The pressure at this side and this side is equal since they all have the same distance. So we ignore that and start from this side. But let's write our equations first then we start computing or we start inputting our figures into the equation so since this is moving up since the mercury is moving up it becomes negative because pressure increases with depth not um with elevation so we have minus rho gh rho hg which the hg is the mercury is the same as the mercury then we come to the air. The air is being assumed as the atmospheric pressure here. So we don't consider the air, but the air is here to confuse us. So if you decide to add the air to it, you get a different value, which is not equal to the atmospheric, which is not equal to the absolute pressure here. So we ignore the air for this setup. 
Then we move on to the next component, which is water. And water also starts from here. The same explanation I gave to you about the mercury having the same distance from this side to this side, the same distance here, the same distance here. You also ignore the distance here because it will cancel out. And we use the distance from this side. And we can see that the water also is elevating, it's, it's going up. So the pressure there will become negative. So rho will denote it by W, G, H. Then everything should be equal to the atmospheric pressure acting on the pipe because this is open to the atmosphere. The pressure there would be the atmospheric pressure, so which is equal to P, H, E, N. So rearranging this, since we are finding for absolute pressure, we have P1 should be equal to P H E M plus rho H G plus the pressure of the water. So now we have been given some vital information here to calculate for our our rho, which is our density. And we know that the specific gravity, which is SG, is equal to the rho or the density of the substance over the density of water. And we all know the density of water to be 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. So to find for that density, we know we have to multiply the SG by the rho of water. And the SG given there is 13.6. So times 1,000, which will give us 13,600 kilogram per meter cube. So we are good to go. Now we are to compute or input our information into the equation we have here. Let's name it equation one. Okay, so let's correct something here. This height here is the height for the mercury. So we also write HG here. And also this height is for the water. We write W here. So in computing for that, we know we have our pressure absolute is equal to the ATM pressure was given to us as 14.2 kilopascal. So that's times 10 to the power 3. Kilo is 3, so we write times 10 to the power 3. Plus the rho of mercury, which we know to be 13,600 times the, the acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant 9.81 meters per second squared. And also the height. So the height here, from here to here is the mercury column. That's where the mercury was filled up to, which is six centimeters. But we have to convert it into meters since the parameters are in meters. So converting it to meters, you have to multiply it by 10 to the power negative two, which will give you 0 0.06 meters. Then we come to the next parameter we have, which is the water. We know rho of water or density of water to be 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. We also know our acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81. And also the water, the height of the water, the height of the water, since this column is fully filled by water, we add the two heights together. We don't separate them. You can decide to separate them, but it will not make sense. Well, you have to add the two heights, making it 27. So 27 centimeters into meters would be 0 0.27 meters. So now we are coming to compute and get our answer.
So after the com after the communication, we had our answer to be twenty four points eight five three seven kilopascal. So this is the absolute pressure in the system or in our manometer. So this is what we are asked to find for. And this is how we go about questions like this in a manometer.